Welcome to Tickmill Weekly Market Outlook for week commencing the 9th of December with me, Patrick Munley. In the US, the FOMC meeting on Wednesday is unlikely to deliver any major surprises, with the central bank on hold after delivering three rate cuts so far this year. Chair Powell should re-emphasise the data-dependent approach of the committee, with November US CPI inflation also due on Wednesday, expecting to come in line at 2% year over year, and November's retail sales release Friday likely rising. The case for no urgent rate cuts should remain in place. Also, Friday's labour market data further supported the notion of stability in interest rates for now. From a technical perspective, the dollar index recovered sharply on Friday after the stronger than expected jobs data and is now expected to test the monthly pivot at the 98 level. If we close above here, then it's likely that we have a A, B, C low in place with a D upside objective now at 98.81. So if we can get that close above 98, I'm expecting a test of the 98.81 area. However, if we, for whatever reason, don't see follow through buying on Monday, then a break below the 97.30 will be a bearish development, suggesting a move through the prior swing lows at 97.13 down to test the 96 level. While well, we're talking about the dollar, let's check in with gold. As the dollar reverse sharply to the upside, the gold price reverse sharply to the downside on Friday. And we now look for Follow through selling at the beginning of the week to retest the current swing lows down to the 1450 to 1447 area. A break here will open an initial test of 1435 with the ultimate downside objective coming in at around 1413. However, if we do see a sharp reversal on Friday's sell off, then we'd be looking for a test of the trendline resistance up at 1490. Canadian dollar erased most of its weekly gains, mainly triggered by a hawkish Bank of Canada policy me message, as the employment data staged the biggest drop since 2009. The unemployment rate rose to 5.9%, although wage growth remained solid. The solid jobs market has been the basis for the Bank of Canada's resistance to follow the global easing trend. And while it's still early to call for a downturn just yet, Markets may be less convinced that the bank will keep such neutral stance for long after Friday's jobs data. In this sense, it will be interesting to analyse Governor Pollis's words at a scheduled speech on the 12th. Unless Pollis, who has just announced he will step down in 2020, decisively downplays the bad jobs number, markets expect that the soft uh, Canadian dollar momentum will prompt the currency to underperform its risk-sensitive peers. From a technical perspective, we saw a sharp reversal on Friday with the stronger than expected US jobs and weaker than expected Canadian jobs. As such, whilst we hold support now at the 131.50, I'm looking for a retest of the 133.30 highs and a break here to target the D equidistant swing objective and the descending trendline resistance in the 134.30 area. In the Eurozone, new ECB chief Lagarde is hosting her first press conference. No material change is expected with QE just being reintroduced this quarter. New ECB staff projections will be published with both CPI growth and projections for 2020 likely lowered. Markets also don't expect any clarity about Lagarde's preference on the ECB strategic review. Mainly markets expect a modest improvement in the December German ZEW index. From a technical perspective, whilst the 111 area remains resistance for the euro, it's likely that we will now retest 110 support en route to our equidistant swing objective down at the 109.30 to 109.50 area. From here, I'll be watching for potential bullish reversals to set long positions targeting an ultimate test of 112.50. If we get a snapback on Friday's reversal and break back through the 111, then I would anticipate that we have our C low in place as such we'll be targeting a D upside objective at 112.50. While we're talking about the Euro, 
Let's check in with the DAX. DAX held the support at the 12,950 level, and as such, I'm now looking for a retest of the prior highs at 13,400, en route to the ultimate upside objective here at 13,650. The overriding event of the week for the sterling is the parliamentary elections on Thursday. The market is currently partly pricing in the Conservative Party victory. Should the Conservative Party gain a majority, as the latest polls suggest, a large Conservative Party majority is said to have more of a positive effect on GDP than the thinner majority, as the latter would raise concerns about the extension of the tr transition period between 2020. Conversely, a hung parliament outcome would lead to a full pricing out of the sterling Brexit resolution, a rebuilding of sterling speculative shorts, and likely weighing on the sterling pounds. Regarding the sterling reaction timeline, the first exit polls are due at 10 p.m. UK time on Thursday, with more clarity on the key battlefield seats to come early Friday morning between 2 and 3 a.m. UK time. Data-wise, the October industrial and manufacturing production due Tuesday should have limited impact on sterling ahead of the election results. Whilst we trade above the 131 handle, I'm now looking for a test of projected trendline resistance at the 133 area. From here, I'll be looking for bearish reversal patterns to set short positions, targeting a retest of the prior resistance back down at 130. Next week, a calendar packed with market moving events worldwide will likely overshadow the impact of the numerous data releases in Japan, which, which pose PMIs, machine orders and PPI. The US-China trade negotiations will inevitably be the key driver throughout the week, with the yen likely finding support on any indication that the trade deal will be delayed. Friday's uh, reversal, we are now looking at the potential to break through the 109 level en route to test the uh, ascending trendline resistance up at 110.14 with the A, B, C, D equality target at 110.50. However, a failure below 108.30 would delay this upside target and suggest we move down to test projected ascending trendline support down to the 107.70 area. Speculation about the restart of the Reserve Bank of Australia's easing has mounted last week, mostly on the back of weak GDP and retail sales data, despite the bank retaining a constructive tone its policy announcement. Next week, we'll not have many local stories driving the Australian dollar, except for a speech by RBA Governor Philip Lowe on Monday although it's not clear whether any monetary policy topic will be touched on. Most of the moves next week will be steered by global sentiment dynamics. The Australian dollar continued to consolidate just below the 68.50 level, as the 68 level continues to act as support, anticipate a break through the resistance at 68.60, en route to a test of the 69 level. However, if we fail to get a break to through the 6860 resistance, and we trade back through 68, then I'd be looking for a test of the ascending trendline support down to the 6720 area. And that concludes the weekly market outlook for week commencing December the 9th.